Okay. Welcome to the first ever uh, Ono type company live critique. And by live, I mean the opposite of live. It's absolutely pre recorded. Today, we're talking to Adam Greasley, the person behind Colt Type Company, and also a uh, graphic design studio called Oak. Oakfold. Oakfold. Great. Yeah. Fantastic branding work. And today we're talking about an in progress typeface that you have named Barkanon. So let's get into, um, first of all, just the specimen for it, I guess. I'm going to share my screen to show you what I'm looking at. Colt, <laughs> calling you Colt. Your name is Adam. <laughs> Now let's check this out together. So in in just the moments before bringing this up, you expressed to me something which I think is right on the money that you're kind of juggling a few different ideas here. And I'm curious, could you just sort of tell me what those ideas are? Um, so with this, I wanted to do something that was um, kind of clean but with a little bit of a <laughs> a bit of a twist on that I suppose something that's less clean in in the mm. mix as well um so a little bit of um high contrast in certain areas um mm. plus some kind of big overhanging um curves on the top um and yeah it's just a few little bits and bobs that are that are kind of not quite gelling. Um, okay. Well, I mean, the degree to which things are gelling, this is, uh, of course, a subjective thing. But yeah, I'm also noticing very much the, uh, the same thing. When mm -hmm. we start talking about the sans genre, there's like three things, right? You got the grotesque thing, you got the humanist thing, and the geometric thing. I would say those would be the three like biggest categories, and then a lot of things fall into subcategories beneath them. The interesting thing that I see with this typeface is uh, details of all three things. We have plenty going on in here that's quite grotesque. You know, the way this E looks, the kind of overhang thing, which I think is a sort of a nod to Stevenson and Blake number nine, sort of old school, quirky, grotesque thing, which of course is echoed in the C and uh, capital S and so on, kind of this like over curve, uh, making for a very closed shape. And we have humanist details, of course, the way this connection happens making that shoulder of the N. This looks like a very humanist N. This looks like a sort of a humanist K even, or even an italic form of the K. Um, and then finally, just a few details that feel a little bit geometric to me, like the A and the N, something that could have come from a typeface like Neutra or even Futura or something mm. like that um so yeah we got all three we even see some interesting stuff in here like a slightly quirky fi ligature and a a very short a sender on the t of course the t doesn't get a normal a sender but it's just like a little little bit of a nub here then on the g we see what looks to me to be perhaps a lower descender than what we see elsewhere and in mm, open yeah. form, we don't really have all the room to like turn around all the way on the lowercase g, so it just kind of remains open. I think we can juggle a lot of different ideas at the same time. I don't um, want to condemn that idea too hard, but I would throw the idea out to you to. Um, to make them into stylistic sets or something like that. 
we do a sort of similar thing on our typeface, obviously, where one stylistic set is open forms and one stylistic set is closed forms, or the default is closed forms. Um, but that was kind of one way to navigate that problem, to give that typeface both flavors and both options available to the user without us saying really what, what belongs there. Um, yeah, now that we're looking at the numbers as well, I see some details in here that are also very grotesque, two, three, um, and then maybe a little bit more humanist, like the eight. So I'm curious to throw it to you, Adam, and say, mm -hmm. what do you like most? Is it the geometric stuff? Is it the grotesque stuff? Is it the humanist stuff? Or are you kind of in this game to do stuff more like this interesting ampersand or even this kind of quirky sterling? Um, what do you think the strengths are here and what are you having fun with? Um, I think that the humanist side is definitely where I'm um, sort of putting most of my efforts, I think, at the moment. Great. Um, I, th I think you can sort of see it here uh, that there's there's a little bit more of that in the repetition, um, Great. more so than everything else. Um, mm. Yeah, I think those are the, the the elements, or that's one of the elements that's mostly interesting me at the moment. Um, Fantastic. Yeah, I think what happens is that um, I, I'm influenced quite easily <laughs> so when you're looking through references and things like that i'm i'm picking up i'm, I'm like a, a magpie just picking up um all those real <laughs> nice shiny things a magpie uh, yeah. <laughs> okay yeah. i love it all right well let's let's talk a little bit about that um and i'll i'll stop presenting for just a moment um in the more towards the beginning of my career, I'm not saying that you're in the beginning of your type design journey. I know this is something that's been going on for 10 years, but the kind of feedback I ran into a lot when I talked to people more experienced than I was is particularly Jim Parkinson. I talked to him one time and he was like, he was like, yeah, man, there's like too many good ideas, you know? So it was nice of him, very kind actually, of him to say they were good ideas that I was I was throwing into like one typeface that I was showing him. Um, but you know, all you need is like one good idea, and a lot of times, all you need a project to do is to teach you something. And I think it's a very worthwhile educational experiment to commit yourself to a genre you know to say this is my humanist sans and i'm going to do all the research on all my favorite humanist sans to say you know this is my thesis statement about what a humanist sans should be um and then you could approach a different genre but my my feeling is when you're doing these typefaces that do juggle a lot of different ideas like um people will kind of tend to do more of in the beginning um it's like you just got to get it out of your system you know and there's nothing wrong with that either so i'm not here to say anything is wrong you could clean this typeface up polish it uh in its current state and move on to the next thing the important thing is that you move on to the next thing you know and, and you try and do the next one um a little bit better but because you kind of made this choice about wanting to emphasize the humanist qualities of that, let's do that. Now mm -hmm. I'm going to do something that teachers should never do, which is open up your actual font file here. <laughs> <laughs> and when I'm working, I always want to have a space center window on the right side and then a glyph window on the left side so I can kind of have these going on. You're in glyphs, I'm in robofont, so of course we're looking at a typeface that does not have any um, overlaps or anything like that, mm -hmm. which is fine. Sometimes I'll just kind of put them in for the sake of like tweaking or, or moving around these things and uh, 
making adjustments as I see fit or whatever. But uh, I'm not critiquing the way that you've drawn your curves or anything like that. I'm just saying this is, you know, this is what we have to do technically because I'm not a glyphs guy. Okay, anyways. <laughs> Your project has two sources, I think, and one is a bold and one is a thin, and uh, that's going to interpolate very nicely on letters like O, and then it's going to maybe give you some problems on a diagonal mm. to be determined. We could say, I don't, I'm not really sure how much of a problem it is there. But then on something like E, where we have a couple of different you know, stroke weights, essentially. Maybe a problem, maybe not. That's up to you. My inclination is that this middle one would maybe get a little bit closer to the top and bottom crossbars. Give us something like that. But that's me just pushing things into the kind of geometric zone, you know, mm -hmm. because I'm like, oh, okay, this is a problem that I can solve. Now, let's go to your N, the bread and butter of everything in the lowercase. And first of all, let's just put a bunch of Ns next to a bunch of Os. I think the width of your O is quite nice. That feels kind of where it should be. And personally, I would say your N is looking a hair wide. Kind of take it down to something like that. And then change the side bearing here. Intuitively, I'm just setting the side bearing to be five units less on the right side. Um, but there's different ways we could talk about that stuff too. Now it's still maybe just, gosh, just maybe a little bit, a little bit wide. Okay. Yeah, that is something that I that I tend to do. I'm, I'll make a wide end. Um, no, I do too. To yeah. be honest, I kind of feel like I run into that all the time. Now, you have this very lovely, super quirky A, and this detail is echoed in a lot of places. But I think what's actually just as interesting is what's happening down here. So I'm curious if I can wipe away this closed terminal thing, take that away, make this overhang now get to a more natural place and is this a in a sort of upright italic kind of a structure is that enough aesthetically to carry the weight of this design you know does that give us enough going on enough verve or je ne sais quoi or something to make things usable because immediately we see a kind of more harmonious thing happen with the a to the n mm -hmm. right but so so with that would you would you keep that uh style and mix that with uh maybe the style of the s and the c with the overhang um but just keep that that curve running um towards the right and never on the left no nah, man i'm coming in whoops I'm coming in with a wrecking ball here. So that's <laughs> okay. okay. I'm I'm going to start making some sweeping changes all around. Because again, we're just trying to do the normal thing here. Mm -hmm. I don't want to get us into a situation where we're trying to juggle too many ideas. So the first step is to just come in with the machete and start blazing a trail through the jungle, eliminating everything that isn't super important to the main thesis statement of this typeface, which is a lively and somewhat quirky humanist sans. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Now we could go and think about the overhang thing in a slightly different way too. We could kick this down to a more comical degree and get the terminal to be significantly sharper so say we're doing a, a sort of thing like that i don't know maybe that's an interesting a i think it has some interesting things going for it 
But in the end, this is not a decision that I can make at all, you know. Another thing to explore, um, as we're kind of embracing the quirk here, is to play with how this connects. This kind of middle part here, maybe that jumps up quite a bit. And now we're kind of into a different sort of zone, pushing it in a display direction. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Is this making sense to you, Adam, or are you hating mm -hmm. everything? No, absolutely. I, okay, okay. I've, I've got no like um, attachment to this font <laughs> at all. Oh, I, think, wow. I, I think because I've looked at it so much, I'm absolutely happy to um, to take any suggestions. All right. Well, okay. The, the point of me going through this stuff is not even so that you take the directions, but more the general idea that you commit. Um, yeah more thoroughly to like one thing yeah you know, sure. i'm trying to i'm spacing and stuff as i go here that's the whole point of having mm -hmm. this laid out in this way but this is a tightly spaced typeface as it is mm -hmm. right now and uh if i wanted it to kind of go into more of a text use thing i'm obviously going to start tracking out everything quite a bit more but Let's leave that as is. Let's just kind of like lock the spacing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'll come into some of these other things that I've noticed. One would be the T. I have um, a kind of keyboard shortcut on my computer so that whenever I'm looking at a glyph, I can hit this keyboard shortcut. That'll bring up a space center window that shows me a word that has a, that letter at the beginning at the end doubled up in the middle maybe next to some other kind of problematic letter like an f so i find that to be pretty handy this t mm. it was just looking like a little a little small you know um i think it actually needs to get a little bit larger on the left on the right uh, on the top as well but to me mm. that's Getting into more of a comfortable spot for the T, just like a little bit more mass. What happens yeah, if that yeah. goes away? Um, so yeah, that's all I really wanted to do up there. But this thing, this crossbar, I'm usually looking for some sort of vertical alignment here. So if I add a guideline and I get that vertical, I'm hoping that these things will kind of approximately get to the same spot-ish. And I want the contrast to line up between these two. Top is 77, bottom is 89 right now. So, you know, maybe that evens out slightly. That sort of thing. So that's looking very much like a T to me now. Let's double check our spacing, get a little bit more on the right. I'm looking at it centered in between O's and centered in between N's. and just making a couple of adjustments. Nothing nothing too big. Um, let's come to something. And stop me here, Adam, if I'm saying anything that pisses you off, offends <laughs> you. I'll stop you if that, if that happens, yeah. All right, all right. Sounds good. Uh, I'm just trying to get this letter a bit more narrow into a place that feels like it's doing the humanist thing mm -hmm. we could put in the a and c like okay just for reference how far do we need to kick this thing down i'll kick it it way down you know i'm just imagining a fake scenario where we have decided that this is indeed what we want to do here And I'll kick that down to the bottom. But of course, we're going for something that's a little bit trapezoidal in shape. You know, we're always looking for that trapezoid kind of thing. I know you know that because I see that evidence in your work. Mm -hmm. And S is also going to be one that gives us a lot of problems in the interpolation side of things. So let's get that drawn more or less. Now my eyes are going over to the right side of the screen. And I'm saying, oh, God, we got some 
issues to sort out here. So getting that centered in between the ends, double checking how it's looking in between the O's. I'm looking at the white spaces, what that space looks like and what that space looks like and seeing if I can get those to just a somewhat happier spot. This is kind of a unique sort of vibe for this typeface and we're in a we're in a weird zone. You know, this S is a little bit strange, but hopefully in a good way. That's mm. what we want, right? <laughs> um we need to check what's going on with our stems exactly at 100 wow incredible and my hunch that that was a little bit thin was correct this sort of vertical measurement in the s rarely is going to be the thickest part in that glyph so i think this just needs to get a little bit more chunky and all right we're in a decent spot we've drawn enough letters now and os okay this is looking like a sort of a vibe now mm -hmm. if we just go through the alphabet here i have to sort these things into something that i'm kind of comfortable looking at because i want to see the capitals first and then the lowercase um we can see like probably a, a good chunk of this alphabet is more or less following the rules that we've set up for ourselves. I want to come back to R, uh, all those diagonals, A, B, C, D, not E. F is kind of in a weird zone at the moment. We can come back yeah, to that. It's a, it's a bit of an outlier is the F. A bit, a bit. Yeah. Let's let's make a note and return. But look at all this that is now speaking the same language. Let's use only the selected characters to make a bunch of words here and check this out on the right side of the screen. Major vibe shift. Mm -hmm. But I think it's kind of kind of speaking the same sort of language now does that make sense yeah no it's getting there the the t's definitely got more presence the t I touch is, the lowercase it's be larger it's not a not a big problem you know it's it's great to be in a situation where you can solve the issue quick <laughs> you know? yeah make a new h because we change so much stuff up to where your ace underline is i'm not even sure but i'm just kind of roughing it in here to get it more or less where it's supposed to go and the way that that d connects let's go check out the d hmm looks just a little bit in in that connection and again following the humanist model you know you can have it almost be like a perpendicular connection there this part of the d Mm. it's a lot more exaggerated in your system as it is right now which is fun so say we wanted to keep that sort of vibe let's jump back over to the d and kind of see how this looks compared to your b oh they are indeed exactly the same thing i wonder why it was looking kind of funkier in the B, because there is like a little bit of a flare there, you know? Mm. So the B has, the B just has one. But I don't know. There's something about this that makes me think the contrast is going like off in that direction. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I'm not sure. We don't want to, we don't want to push it. That's, that's too crazy. So let's yeah. just, <laughs> let's, let's, keep things under control for the moment go to r if we start looking at r in the kind of classic roman construction of things sort of vibe i think just a diagonal r 
is going to make a little bit more sense with the mm. rest of the context, with the M and the N and the V and the A. Getting a strong diagonal in there doesn't seem like a bad idea. And then I would probably do the same thing with K. This is a cute K, but I think is kind of bringing in another couple of different ideas. So let's just eliminate that stuff for now. Uh, kind of get these shapes connected. Even this shape connected. And then just do this thing. Very humanist K. Check it out in the context. Oh, it's still looking a little bit narrow to me. So is this a way that you typically edit things in glyphs when you're looking at things isolated and zoomed in and also able to kind of see the forest for the trees at the same time? Uh, sometimes it depends. Um, yeah, it, it can be. I don't, I don't have like the same kind of um, side setup where you've got lots of different uh, different strings there, which is seems really useful. Um, oh, if you take one you thing useful. away from this phone call, man, I'm telling <laughs> you, uh, this is truly something in my process that I I could not live without at this point it's crazy it's how useful that really becomes yeah it does um, seem good where that r leg connects is another significant vibe changer mm. um, and i will leave that thoroughly in your <laughs> decision making uh <laughs> brain to, to spend yeah. hours over <laughs> no 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 this is the that's the, the thing um, the, the we don't have ours. hours to waste we gotta um, we gotta keep it moving yeah ours ours and k's that's that's where all my time is spent on oh, an s s is also a time suck isn't it but yeah an oh, r and a k God. let's check your capital um out okay we're in such a different place now just to give you a frame of reference of how i do it just scale it Correct it. I don't have a background layer in this font yet because I opened it up as a OTF. So I'll just make a new background layer really quick. Send it to the background. Change the spacing. Spacing and drawing as we're going. Just get the the capital just a little narrower. You know, your caps are just a hair on the narrow side. I'm compared to where I normally place them which is a good thing because i think i have a tendency to draw way too wide most of the time now i'm just scaling things around and you can move individual points all you want but something i really try and sing or spread the gospel of is editing things as a group of points that you can scale and shift around because then you're editing four points at the same time, you know, mm -hmm. two points, two handles, something like that. And then you're flying, we get in the barrel or in the green room. These are all surfing slang terms. Um, but basically means you're you're focused and you're in a flow state with it. Okay, that S is looking hair too far to the right. I'm tracking it in slightly. The capital O is maybe just looking a little bit square. I like to edit my O like this, where I grab all these points. There's probably some faster way of doing this in glyphs or something, but I'm holding Shift and Command and Alt. Really, my my hand is looking like an eagle's talon somehow, <laughs> but. I'm, I'm doing a bunch of these things so I can edit symmetrically side to side, top to bottom. Yeah. All right. Now, I guess we could go further into um, any letter. It doesn't really matter too much, but the R seems like I would be upset with myself if I wasn't going to make this suggestion, which I've made on dozens of other people's typefaces over the years mm. but 
Um, I had a teacher that said, all the R has to do is be not a lowercase i. And that means <laughs> they can get quite, quite narrow. Yeah. Like the game I try and play with this and setting the word space, everything, um, is how narrow can it be? At what point does it kind of like fail? Because it's such a spacing conundrum. Mm. Now we have a nice little R. Let's just get one more problematic, grotesque looking letter out of the way. And ah, we should probably do something really, really meaty like a G. So we can borrow our terminal from the S as a kind of shortcut here. We don't have anything that's quite wide enough yet. We could throw that in and just give it a little bit of a scale change. Fun G. I like where this piece is kind of going now. We mm. also have a little bit more vertical room to play with. And we could uh, get it in down a little bit further. I think because of the interpolation, this crossbar here on G, G's signature or salient feature is um, getting a little bit thin. So I kind of mm -hmm. thickened things up. Between those details, this overhang and this kind of tapered move, I think we have a quite a nice little system unfolding before our eyes. Let's look at a word like graphic. Oh. Our C is out of date. A true shame. It looks just like totally bummer to me right now. Just so, so sad at the moment because it has a vague resemblance to Myriad. No offense to the type of Myriad, but Myriad is the quintessential Adobe default, you know? Yeah, so when no things even have, yeah, just a passing slight resemblance to myriad um alarms start going off in my head and i must i must change things top is looking okay let's see how far we can get when we just flip and reconnect overshoot is still looking decent this is looking like a a believable c kind of in the same zone as antique olive we could emphasize that if we wanted to and make it like reverse contrast i don't want to get things closer to antique olive because there are many typefaces that are doing that already now i'm looking at this detail and i want to compare it with the g look how thin it is on the g i know it's kind of a different detail there but I'm wondering what happens if we get it to there. It starts looking like the typeface meek by my friend Ryan Bugden. But if it's kind of in the middle ground, I think that's a cool place to be. And that would obviously be something that I would echo through the rest of the characters too. Even something like um, kind of just riff in here for the sake of it. But it's a little bit more drama since this is uh, a display typeface after all let's just check out some of these letters that we've touched so far and yeah i think things are kind of kind of interesting kind of happening and we might even have enough to kind of show us a good approximation mm. One more thing that I just can't resist the temptation to mess around with here is bringing in this detail from the C. Yeah, it's necessary. It's necessary. Thanks for your patience as I'm going through this stuff. I know this. Oh, no, it's good. It's fascinating. It's nice very... seeing other people work. Well, you know, I, I find it interesting myself. But for any people that would say, hey, this is the most boring thing I've ever seen in my life. I would rather watch paint dry. I couldn't really blame those people either. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
All right, the X is one that uh, hmm, just needs a little bit of fuss and maybe a little more tapering in there. Seems like it would get things bored with everything else. And then E, a bit more humanist quality in there. OK. Do you have any questions? Are there things that you're particular, uh, particularly curious about right now, Adam? Um, in terms of what against this this font in particular, or just in, in general? Listen, I don't man, know I'm, I'm an open <laughs> book, dude. You can you can ask me um, personal questions about my life. You can do whatever you want. Um. Off the top of my head, <laughs> not really. I mean, this is this is far more than what I was expecting to to go through, to be honest. Um, so yes, yeah, it's, it's a real privilege to see this come together. Listen, um, dude, I'm I'm here to help, man. And I uh, I had many people in my experience uh, offer a lot to me for no real reason. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's a nice thing about this industry that we find ourselves in, um, that we are, you know, professionals. That's part of it. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, we're just enthusiasts, mostly, um, or we wouldn't be doing it <laughs> if it wasn't <laughs> something that we were stoked on for some reason yeah no that's true i think that's that's kind of what i've what i've found in the past um past few months um just because i've i've been quite um insular in in my type design um and i, I think sort of reaching out to people has been has been really good and i think that um trying to create a bit of a network is always good you know it's always good to know people um so it's yeah huge huge yeah, yeah. it is it is the thing um there's really i think that's that's why crossfit is the way it is you know it's it's why people who have accountability partners and whatever they're trying to do mm -hmm. have more success it's just you gotta have the community you gotta have people that where you go to explain stuff they don't come in with oh that's a really weird thing that's a really bizarre hobby they're just like cool i got it i understand um i also really quickly wanted to just bring up your website and talk about specimens and stuff like that mm -hmm. because i think there's a lot of things in here that look really great to me kodo mm -hmm. mono just the way this specimen works, I find very believable. Cool. Um, other things like well, nice pizzas, marker, mark out. I don't know. This seems to me like a typeface that you that would be selling at a different price point than this typeface. Does that make sense? Yeah, 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 absolutely. This is this is one of the things that I'm trying to sort of really figure out. Like, where is my interest lying in terms of what what sort of um fonts do i want to produce and at what price point and for who as well i think that's something that i'm missing who is this who am i doing this stuff for um, well i'm i've always found that to be an impossible question to answer but hmm. i've always had success with this stuff is just making rules for myself mm -hmm. saying i'm really not allowed to use you know whatever color or um whatever photograph or something like that i really mm -hmm. limit all the ono stuff to black and white for that reason mm -hmm. and um i also i've kind of been messing around with it more lately but typically don't do text over photo thing my thinking is like mm -hmm. i'm selling type you know i'm not selling the photo so let's let's just show the type that's what I really yeah. respond to about the Kodo Mono specimen is mm -hmm. it's if I saw a page of these things, I'd be like, oh, I'm looking at a Foundry website right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, there's more focus, I suppose. 
Yeah, yeah. There's just uh, a little bit more confidence and a little bit more clarity. And um, I think that's what we want to see all the time is just confidence. Mm -hmm. Qu quick rest. This looks like a typeface that belongs to a separate type foundry. That was then my first one. Okay, great. Yeah, so you that, know? that's an old one. Um, yeah, I, th I think I, I need to be. Um, you got to do that stuff. In and out stuff. Yeah. And I don't know, it's take it for what you will, but um, I've just had a lot of fun thinking about what the Ono brand kind of is and mm -hmm. what I want to really fully commit to and and dig into and um, periods in history in which I mine for more ideas, you know, than than other things. But the greatest thing that helped me with that was going to grad school and kind of seeing where I fit in a mix of different students that were all, you know, smarter than I was mm -hmm. essentially, you know, and, mm -hmm. and faster and, and more talented and, and better programmers and everything else. But I kind of looked around and saw, oh, okay, they're not interested in this thing. So that might be something that the community and getting more involved with that um, will help out with more so than anything else mm -hmm. but i think you the way that you're drawing and everything that i see there is really nearing like total proficiency i think we have some spacing some weight stuff to work on mm -hmm. some proportion stuff maybe mm -hmm. but uh i'm not worried about like how you're drawing curves really and stuff like that you know you seem like yeah. you've really put in quite a bit of time there and the graphic design part because your background that'll never be a real problem for you mm -hmm. either so i think you're poised to hit the ground running absolutely but you know your day-to-day -day job and all your other current responsibilities that stuff is always hard to balance i find yeah. having a typeface that people can use on corporate projects again and again has done more to subsidize are other more interesting typefaces than anything else ever could mm -hmm. so that's what i'd encourage you to do and i think you could uh probably do it with this typeface cool thank you i really appreciate it. it's uh yeah it's been it's been great it's been really good um, well good deal i'll hit the stop recording button now <laughs> sure. but yeah, I'm, I'm not kicking you off the call no worries <laughs>